I personally, this is one of the best behemoth songs done ever, period. Singing along with the piano, this is supposed to be behemoth, demigod, give me demigod. Nah, not happening, sorry. I'm giving you versus Christus. This is me. Take it or leave it. I believe it was pre-pandemic. I started collecting demos. I usually start at the very early stages. Even now I got like fucking, I don't know, 10 ideas already for whatever is coming next. <laughs> so I start early and I just collect them. So pre-pandemic, uh, the process had started. And then throughout pandemic, I kind of um, told everyone to relax because uh, of pandemic. And uh, I just didn't want to stress things because the whole world was already a big fucking, you know, stress and turmoil. And, and I was like, ah, let's just, you know, take some time off and rethink, you know, the directions and costs and, and everything. And then we started these sessions, like this studio, rehearsal studio sessions, like chunks, you know, that were spread out in time. And the rest is history, basically. We started recording during pandemic. We mix and master, like lately, I mean, a few months ago, uh, like early this year. And uh, yeah, and you have the record in your hands now. With me, it's, it's got to resonate really like deeply. Uh, immensely, you know, communicating with what's here and what's outside. And when I came across that term, the Latin term that was actually invented by Gustav Jung, and he had his own agenda attached to that, I kind of stole just the term disregarding what he meant by this, because I know exactly what it means. Opus contra natura means at least my interpretation is the work of art. So it's very, you know, self-portrait, you know, because I'm talking from a self-perspective. So basically the, the work of art or the artist himself being against uh, the world, basically. The order of things. And um, I'm very much, you know, you know, counterpoint to a lot of political and and social tendencies that I find that, like threatening to our liberties. And of course, that's just my opinion. I mean, that's my interpretation of the title. It's very rebellious again, but becoming more intellectual, I'd say. Not just your regular satanic chit chat. And uh, it's it's deeper, yet it really like make threats to what's happening around me and what's happening in my life. So it's really like rooted in, you know, in, in my own experience, which makes me, yeah, we, which makes me more emotionally attached to the title and the record. For a few albums now, I, I kind, I'm kind of used to those people's reactions that um, uh, they, you know, it's very comparative. You know, they're like, whatever they got used before, they always see that the new is like, Ugh. of course, there's a lot of people who are enthusiasts of music and they just fucking dig whatever they want, uh, the, the, whatever we do. Uh, having in mind that Behemoth never releases stuff that is just mediocre or just uh, whatever, you know what I mean? I do stand behind what I do and what I say, and I pay fucking my lifetime to make sure that this is my lifetime's energy, that this is the most of me that I'm giving you. This is the, the most impactful, the most quality thing, the, the most genuine thing I can serve, okay? So, and sometimes people have just different optics, you know, but I've kind of learned doing things on my own terms, you know, and I'm nobody's bitch and I'm nobody's slave, you know? So if, of course, there's comments, you know, oh, I wish Behemoth would be demigod. I mean, do I wish to be 28 again and recording demigod and being that person? That should be the question. The answer is, fuck no. Do I wish to be that person 
that recorded Evangelion. There's, of course, there's comments there. Oh, Behemoth was the peak of it. Why they're not doing the same? Like Evangelion. The question should be, do I want to take the time back and be that person that uh, recorded Evangelion? Fuck no. That's the answer. There's many reasons why. I don't know if you're reading me and what I'm trying to say is that I'm perfectly comfortable with who I am and what I am and what my needs are. And I aspire to a lot of things and I have massive ambition. But what you have in hands now in the form of new, uh, new Behemoth's album, Opus Contra Natura, is exactly who I am. So all those wish lists you can just throw in the garbage. It's not going to work. The singles were received well. I think the first one, Herculean Exile, was kind of like took people off the hook because it's a mellow song. And then again, I was like, you know what? Fucking every band out there, just name it. No band out there in the metal business puts out like the slow song almost, you know, like even Behemoth in all the previous records, pretty much every song would be just boom, banger, you know, balls out, muscle, and like very, you know, powerhouse kind of singles. So this time we're like, ah, let's just do it otherwise, you know. Let's just go against the current. And we released this very cinematic uh, song or, of my Herculean Exile with absolutely amazing, almost movie-like vision attached to that. They're really well glued together, really well um, matched. And uh, and then off to war, and then, which was again, you know, something else artistically. I mean, musically, quite a straightforward with a banger, so to say, with some reminiscences of maybe 90s, with something else, I don't know what. Then the vision, you know, there was, you know, the the expression, the, like visual expression of that song was again something we've never done before. So just trying new grounds. Then we released Deathless Sun, probably the people's favorite by now. But now I'm kind of reading through the comments, you know, going through the comments and like a lot of people like po are pointing out Versus Christus, the closing track, which is again, more avant-garde-ish, just me kind of singing on the top of a piano. And then I guess, I don't know, I haven't really read like a bashing comments on that one. Like people are like, oh, wow, what a song. But I bet that those comments are coming. What the fuck had happened to that guy, you know, like fucking singing along with the piano. This is supposed to be he behemoth, demigod, give me demigod. Nah, not happening. Sorry. I'm giving you versus Christus. This is me. Take it or leave it. That's how we wrap up the album that song and I bet that we'll be playing that song live because we so want to challenge ourselves because that song starts off like very softly, very eerie, creepy mood and then just builds up and gets bigger and bigger and the ending is fucking spectacular. I personally, this is one of the best Behemoth songs done ever, period. Just wait for the video coming out next week. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we were trying to do something big around the, the release date. And uh, I've been talking about that for months and months and we had different ideas. We even had an idea to go and perform somewhere in Kiev, Ukraine. Yeah, we were actually making contacts with some productions out there. We were thinking not only we can just make an artistic statement, but we can also make a very important political statement that I, that I, I mean, I use my platforms, I, I use stage and I use even like talking to like interview and in interviews, you know, I just, I just use that to, to mention things that I consider very relevant and righteous. Okay. So we were thinking, you know, maybe we should fucking go to Kiev, do it on the top of some buildings. or maybe if there's bombing, we should fucking go underground like you two did, you know, Bono and Edge, they, they performed in a, in a, in a metro, you know, underworld, underground. And uh, yeah, we, we were just bouncing back all those ideas, you know, but we, eventually we ended up, you know, okay, logistically, economically, even though it was still fucking 
pricey. I really hope that people will, you know, pay attention, that people will click on that, that we will, people will appreciate all the effort that we put, um, you know, and invested, you know, and of course it's free of charge, you know, we're just giving you something extra around the record, you know, just to build hype ab about the record and also hype for the upcoming European and South American tours. So, um, yeah, um, a lot of work. The Wolfpack, our crew fucking did a miracle. They worked since eight in the morning. There was like, there's only this like very narrow, like tiny um, pathways, you know, like gateways to get to this rooftop, you know, from that, you know, there was like a window here. And there's like this, you know, just imagine just going off and like up and down, up and down at the rooftops, you know, and you got the small ladders and stuff. And they fucking escorted from A to B three tons of equipment starting 8 a.m. We started rehearsing, sound checking um, seven and we started filming, sorry, at 5 p.m. and we started filming seven plus and ended up at 10 p.m. And then they had to take all that down and they ended up early in the morning. So more than our endeavor, more than our labor and, and, and challenge that we took as a band, I honestly think that, you know, that the applause and a shout out should really go to our crew <laughs> because the way it looks, you know, it's, it's really thanks to them. They did fucking spectacular job. So hands down fucking best, the best crew uh, I could ever, you know, imagine to, to have in a band. So, yeah, just and, and then I'm I'm not gonna spoil. If you still haven't seen that, fucking go on YouTube, just click it in. It's called Opus Contra Culturam. So I did this really like travel uh, traversy, I guess that's the word uh, of the title, because the building that we are performing at top of is called the Palace of Culture. Okay, so this word culture is a keyword to you know for my um wordplay that i use because the album is all is called opus contra natura so our manager and and myself we came up with that opus contra cultura you know just playing with both kind of you know so yeah i mean i'm very happy with it Lastic was awesome uh, i have not enough you know good words to talk about vicky and alan they really make us feel like a family there and i mean it great times we arrived the day before we had the full day to relax to get ready and stuff you know the per the performance was quite flawless for us you know like li some little technical issues on my end you know but i i made it like invisible for for spectators so I really we came out very strong and we that was kind of definition of of you know of our position over there in albion love coming back every time you know around and uh, I'm quite pissed off about Brexit I think that's the stupid this things your society could could do to yourself and to all the visitors because it's a fucking hell of a problem for us to get fucking work permits and all this attack it's a lot of paperwork so much bureaucracy bullshit no one really needed that but that's just our problem. There's plenty, like, multiple problems around that fact that you just guys, you know, you kind of isolated yourself again from the rest of Europe, sadly. But it's not going to stop Behemoth from coming back to UK and hammering our music, our songs, all the new and mid-school Behemoth into your motherfucking heads. So expect a, a, a rejuvenated version of Behemoth. If you've seen Behemoth live at Bloodstock, trust me, it's not a copy paste. So there's songs that we haven't played again in, I don't know, ages. That we're actually like, like rehearsing now and we'll be playing them. So I really hope it's going to be a perfect blend be between like the elder stuff, the 2000s and the modern stuff. And it's going to be the biggest Behemoth production as well as much as they allow us but because for most cases london is always just you know it's, it's no to fire every time we play in forum it's not doable i don't know where we played 
this time. I believe it's some arena. You correct me, I don't know. But I really hope that we can pull off like full fire show this time and just just give give um, give all the all the UK manics what they deserve. 